Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 39 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. And before we get started, as always, I would like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and to you, the listener. You make this ministry possible. And I'm excited to have you on the Building Great Lives team here at the Building Great Lives podcast. It's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. Thank you for sharing these episodes. We're praying that each of these messages of hope would reach every possible person in every possible nation. In today's episode, we're going to talk about some practical ways to grow our faith. Did you know that faith is supposed to grow? That's right. Our faith can grow. Matter of fact, I believe that our faith should be increasing. Faith is not just a religious term. Faith is a living connection between us and God. Faith is alive. It is what we call the fire that burns within us. And faith is intended to increase. Now, in Luke chapter 17 and verse number 5, The disciples made a profound request to Jesus. They asked him to increase their faith. In a world filled with difficulties, it would have been understandable if they had looked at the Lord and said, Lord, sustain our faith. Just keep it where it is. Certainly don't let it decline. But through the difficulties of our day, sustain us. That would be a powerful prayer. But they did not just pray for a sustaining faith. They asked the Lord to increase their faith. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 32, Jesus told Peter that he prayed for him that his faith would fail not. Now that's vitally important. And there's three areas of our faith that we really need to pay close attention to. It's not just about praying that our faith doesn't fail. And that's vital. That's important. Jesus prayed that for Peter, and it gave Peter a reassurance. And the same prayer that he's prayed for Peter is also a prayer that is for us as well. Because the enemy desires to sift us as wheat, to tear us apart, to put us through things that leave us broken. But Jesus prayed that our faith would not fail. The second thing that we need to understand about faith is it's not just about a faith that remains or a status quo faith. You don't come in, learn about God, receive him, and then just maintain a faith that never grows. Now, I have seen people that have lived for God for years just maintaining faith. They never really grow. They never really step out. They never really do anything. And thank God they're not going backwards, but they need the revelation that God intends for their faith to grow. We need the revelation that God desires to use us. And I'm not just talking about people that are in the pulpit ministry. I'm talking about each and every spirit-filled person. God has a plan for your life, and I want this episode to stir something inside of you that says, I'm thankful that I've got a God. I'm thankful that I've got a church. I'm thankful that I've got prayer partners that are praying that my faith never fails. I'm thankful for a steady faith, but I want something to stir inside of me that says I am hungry for more. I want to grow. I want to increase. I want my faith in God and in the things of God to increase so that God can use me more. I pray that something is beginning to stir inside of you right now that says, 
I want that. I want to pray the same prayer that the disciples prayed. Lord, increase my faith. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but didn't Jesus compare faith to a mustard seed? And we know that a mustard seed is very small, so wouldn't that imply that the Lord intends on our faith to be small? There's a powerful reason that Jesus chose the mustard seed as an example of faith. It was not because he wanted us to see faith as something that should remain small. In Luke 17 and verse 16, and the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Faith as or faith like a grain of mustard seed. So faith as a grain of mustard seed, what does that mean? What kind of faith is the faith that is like a mustard seed? Does it mean small? There's a misconception about mustard seed faith. We find this in an old song that we used to sing that goes something like this. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you've got. Now, when I was young and I used to hear that song, I used to think, well, I don't need a lot of faith. But there's a misconception in that leaves the impression that faith can be small. Now, I understand the the real meaning of the song is to use your faith. I get that. But faith was never intended to remain small. It may start small, but it was not intended to remain that way. That's why Jesus used the mustard seed, because it being one of the smallest seeds, Jesus then referred to that seed as one that is planted and grows. That's why we find a further explanation of it in Luke chapter 13 in verse 18 and 19. Then he said unto them, the kingdom of God is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast in the garden, and it grew and waxed into a great tree. So when we begin to get this deeper revelation of faith and how Jesus was using it in comparison to the mustard seed, we begin to understand that between Luke 17 and verse 6, where he compared faith to a grain of mustard seed, and then the revelation of Luke 13, verses 18 through 19, we find that faith in the kingdom that resembles the mustard seed, it was never intended to be something that was small. It was intended to be something that was growing. The farmer takes the seed that's small, plants it in the ground, and it grows into a great tree. And when we take these scriptures together, we understand exactly the kind of faith that the Lord was telling us that we need. Faith is like a seed. The purpose of the seed is to be planted so that it can grow and produce increase. This is why Jesus related our faith to the mustard seed. It was not about it remaining small. It was about it being planted and growing into increase. It's powerful that the Lord is teaching us that what is small can become great, that what is seemingly so insignificant can become something very powerful. And again, I want to reiterate, this isn't just for those that feel a call to pulpit ministry. This is for each and every one of us to understand. The enemy wants to sift us as wheat, but God has prepared for those uh, that are hungry for more the revelation that what is on the inside of you can grow. Some of you may be thinking, but how do I know I have a faith that can grow? Well, I'm glad you asked because Romans chapter 12 and verse number three, Paul is teaching and he says to them that God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now the word measure there means he has given them a portion of faith. 
He didn't say that he gave that only to a few people. Romans 12 and 3 declares that he's given it to every man. That means every one of us has a measure of faith on the inside. That is why that I believe, as the scripture teaches, that it's not the will of God that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How is that? The Bible said that if he be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. So there is a portion of God-given faith in every God-created person. That's why life is so valuable is because God has created a portion of faith inside every single one of us. And so when we begin to lift him up, when we begin to magnify him, when we begin to pray for others, that portion of faith that is inside of them is being drawn back to the one that gave it. That is God. That's why God can draw men from the depths of sin. That's why God can draw us from the depths of despair because there is a portion of faith that is inside. It may be small like a mustard seed, but it has potential to grow into a great tree. That's why you should never give up on anybody, no matter how far out from God they seem, no matter how small and insignificant their faith may seem. There is potential inside of every one of us uh, that God can use us uh, to become something powerful in the kingdom of God. It's not to exalt ourselves, but it's to exalt the name of Jesus. It's not so that we gain, but it's so that there is increase in the kingdom. And the way that happens is recognizing that the portion of faith that is given, the measure of faith, that small amount of faith that's given, God is calling us to grow that measure into something great. And so there is the reason that he uses the example of the mustard seed in Luke 17 and in Luke 13 because he's comparing the growth of the kingdom that goes from being small to being great. That is the kind of faith that is inside of each and every one of us. Small can grow to great things in the kingdom. But we've got to get to a place that we're saying, thank you, Lord, that you're praying for my faith not to fail. Thank you, God, that I've got sustaining faith. But God, I want to take my faith to the next level. I'm ready for growing faith. I'm ready for faith that can move mountains. I'm ready for faith that believes for things that I have never seen. I'm ready to see the miraculous things of God come to pass. And that is the kind of faith uh, that God is ready to give to those that will pray that prayer that the disciples prayed. Lord, increase our faith. And so if you want your faith to increase, I want to talk about a few practical ways that can help our faith to increase, things that we can all do. These practical steps are for those that are just converted and for those that have been in a long time. If you want your faith to increase, you can take these steps. The first thing you need to do to increase your faith is you need to identify specific areas you feel your faith needs strengthened. Paul dealt with this when he wrote to the Thessalonians. He said this in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 10, night and day praying exceeding that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, perfect there means to supply, to supply what was lacking, to take their faith and add to it so that they could become what God was calling them to be. That was 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. When you get to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 3, Paul said this, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly. So in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 10, he's telling them, we're praying that God would add to your faith. 
But when you get to his second letter to the Thessalonians, he is telling them, we're thanking God because your faith is growing exceedingly. There was something that happened inside of them where they were able to identify the areas of their faith that needed to grow, that needed perfected. Each one of us will have different areas in our lives. As a matter of fact, those areas change from time to time. You may be going through something now where God is developing your faith. Let him do that. You may face something today and it may be something different in the future. Matter of fact, it will be. That is just how life works. And so each and every one of us has to identify the areas in our lives that need our faith to be increased. When we identify those areas, we need to begin to focus our prayer, our reading of the Word of God, and we need to begin to ask God help this area of my life. And when you've identified that area, find resources that can help increase your faith and bring greater understanding to that area. So the first thing you can do to increase faith is identify the areas that you need. This is something you can do for the rest of your Christian walk with God that you identify continually areas that I need to increase in, I need to grow in, and focus on increasing your knowledge in those areas. Another thing you can do to help increase your faith is get in the Word. Get in the Word. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, I know what you're thinking. Get in the Word. Well, that's obvious. No, no, no. It's, it's deeper than that. Hear me out. Here's what we need to do. We have to be intentional. It's not just about getting in the Word, but it's also gathering the resources that are now available to us, focused biblical reading that deal with the very areas that you want to grow in. Listen to podcasts on those subjects. Read devotionals about those areas of faith. Read books about faith. Listen to sermons about faith. We must be intentional. The third practical step to increasing your faith, surround yourself with people that have the kind of faith you want. We all have those people around us where we think, If I could just be like them. Well, they face their own battles as well. Every stage of our Christian development or every stage of our life development comes with battles and victories. That's just life, not just in the natural, but in the spiritual. Find somebody that has the kind of faith that you want and connect yourself to them. Allow them to sow seeds of faith into your life. Paul said in Romans 1 and 12 that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, the King James uses the word comforted, and it means encouraged. He's literally saying that we may be mutually encouraged by the faith that others have. So connect yourself to people that can encourage growth in your faith. We must be very careful who we connect ourselves to because when we get around certain people, it will either increase our faith or it will decrease our faith. When the spies sought out the land of Canaan and they come back and the 10 gave a negative report, it went through the congregation of Israel. And even though Joshua and Caleb said, we can take it, The children of Israel connected themselves to people that had the negative report and that influenced their faith. They went from, we can take the land, we've had this promise for generations, to we can't take the land. It would have been better if we would have died in the wilderness. And that generation did that. Be careful who you connect yourself to. 
So when you find somebody that has the faith that you're looking for, connect yourself to them. Spend time with the people that are in the place that you're trying to go to because they can help you get there. Surround yourself with people that inspire you to do more for God. Be cautious who you're letting influence your faith. Surround yourself with people that encourage you to grow. Surround yourself with people that encourage you to exercise your faith. I don't spend a ton of time with people that want to tell me my vision for ministry is impossible. We only have so much time allotted to us. I'm going to spend my time around people that say, we can do great things for God. We can do this. We can have revival. We can have faith. Our faith can grow. I'm going to connect myself with people that believe in the things of God. Another practical step to increasing our faith is put your faith in action. Step out of the boat. Take your faith to the next level. Take your normal to the next level. Now, I'm not promoting living or acting reckless, but for our faith to grow, we need to take steps beyond our comfort zone. In other words, there are times we have to step out of the boat, and that's going to look different for each of us. I heard someone say, pray for me that God would give me boldness. I want to start praying with people. I want to see people get the Holy Ghost. I would love to see hundreds of people get the Holy Ghost. And I asked them, are you praying with people in the altar? No, I'm praying for boldness. I'm praying that God would help me. What an incredible prayer. And I told them, I said, instead of focusing on praying the thousands through, why don't you focus first? Pray with one first. So as we dream of praying thousands through, Let's take the positive steps to pray with one and become more comfortable. Now, I know that doesn't sound as powerful. It doesn't sound as great as praying the thousands through. I know that it doesn't post as great on social media. We would love to get on our social accounts and say, pray the thousand through today. And that's great, and it builds faith in others. But in order to get to that place, you've got to learn to step beyond your comfort zone. And it starts with one. It starts with learning to obey the voice of God and pray with one. So whatever you're used to, the increase of faith is going to require you to step beyond that. I'm not asking you to step 10 steps beyond. Maybe it's just one step beyond and then another step and another. And the consistency of stepping beyond your normal, beyond your comfort zone will allow you to grow in faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 24 through 29, Peter looked at the Lord and many of them were afraid and Jesus told them, be of good comfort. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to come out on the water with you and the storms raging and the lightnings crashing and the winds blowing. And Peter steps out of the ship and walked on the water. Now, all the other disciples, and I love the text there because it mentions them as disciples. So they were disciples whether they stepped out or whether they stayed in the boat. But the choice is, how do you want your faith to operate? Do you want your faith to grow? If you do, then you're going to have to get out of that comfort zone and step onto the water. My comfort zone does not require much faith. And so you can take these practical steps and mold them to where you are in your life to the things that you're dealing with. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter how long you've been in church, whether a short while or a long while, God desires to increase your faith. And as has become our tradition here at the Building Great Lives podcast, I want to pray that we have the same desire the disciples had. 
The disciples said, Lord, increase my faith. Jesus, I'm asking you right now that you would help us to step out of our comfort zone. Help us to identify the areas that we need our faith to grow in. God, as you bring that revelation to each and every one of us, God, I pray that there would be a hunger that would rise up in us that would say, Lord, increase my faith. God, I know that when I pray this prayer, some things that increase my faith is me living through difficult times because faith that is tried is faith that can be trusted. And God, I'm asking you right now, give me the strength to endure the things that it would take to help me grow because I want my faith to grow. I want to become everything that you've called me to be. And God, I pray that for every listener right now. I believe that they want to grow. I believe they're praying for more. And God, answer their prayer and increase their faith. And as always, thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend. Maybe text them the link or share it on your social. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum, on Instagram at Rev Gillum. You can also reach the show at Building Great Lives Podcast at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, let's keep building. You've been listening to the Building Great Lives Podcast, a member of the Real Life Church Network. Join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions. 